Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, cancelled the debt, and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I cancelled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. In a conversation with Peter, Jesus poses a challenge that undoubtedly upends our human notions of justice. In a world where a ledger of profits and losses governs not just the economy but also interpersonal relationships, the Messiah speaks to us about boundless forgiveness. Isn't this a contrarian philosophy? In our daily struggles, where even the slightest injury can stir a storm in the heart and raise blood pressure, Christ's words act like a balm, or for some, a thorn. How many times should I forgive my brother who sins against me? Seven is a symbolic amount of completeness. The inclusion of this number in most Bible translations signals to the listener that it's about continual forgiveness and escalating it to a higher order. 77 leaves no room for doubt. Up to seven times, Peter asks. Jesus' response not just seven times, but seventy-seven times, is like a proverbial gauntlet thrown at our emotional limitations. This story about a king and two servants who find themselves on opposite sides of the debtor's script reveals the essence of God's kingdom. The first servant, despite a gigantic debt, is pardoned by his master. His reaction? Instead of reciprocating grace, he chooses a path of ruthlessness towards his own deep door. What an irony, the pardoned who could not pardon. Doesn't this mirror Rus? How often, having received forgiveness, can we not forgive others? We are like that servant who, though freed from debt, chooses the shackles of resentment and bitterness. The modern world teaches us to be tough, not to be taken advantage of, and revenge is often seen as sweet. But is it really? Jesus shows us that true strength lies in forgiveness. It is not a sign of weakness, but of courage. Apostle Paul in the fourth chapter of Ephesians says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. This is a call to emulate God and his infinite mercy. This story also contains a warning. Jesus ends the parable with words that should give us pause. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. 
It's a reminder that our forgiveness is not optional, but a condition of our own pardon. So, how can we practice such forgiveness daily? Start with small steps. Forgiving minor misunderstandings, then moving on to bigger ones. Practicing empathy and praying for those who have wronged us. Yes, it won't be easy, but remember, in this challenge, we are not alone. The Holy Spirit is with us to help us forgive 77 times. From a psychological perspective, acts of forgiveness have a profound impact on the forgiving person. Holding on to grudges, anger or resentment can lead to chronic stress, negatively affecting physical and mental health. Nursing anger and resentment can lead to heart problems, hypertension and even depression. Forgiveness allows one to be freed from the burden of negative emotions. It opens the path to inner peace and health. Forgiveness is a process that can bring relief and a new perspective on life. When we forgive, we do it not only for the person who hurt us, but primarily for ourselves. It's a step towards freeing ourselves from the past, allowing us to move forward without the weight of anger and resentment. Such an approach enables more open and compassionate relationships with others and supports our personal growth. Let today's contemplation be an encouragement for us all to build relationships not on the terms of this world, but on the statutes of the Kingdom of Heaven, where forgiveness is the currency and love, the strongest of all currencies. Grace and peace to you.